All right, we're back, folks, with Fight Nation host, Hall of Famer. That's right, our own Mark Henry. What's going on, man, champ? Pleasure to have you on. Man, I appreciate y'all having me on, man. I'm sitting here just in awe, man. Like, I listened to the show, and now you got Jeffrey Wright on? (laughs) Man, I can't follow that. Credit our producer, Josh Friedman, you know, booking the proper guests. Uh, Nah, he's a hell of an actor, man. I Listen, think you man, actually when, can. When you stabbed him. yourself with that ice pick, I was just yeah. like, "Okay, <laughs> okay, I'm in. I'm in Harlem now." Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, listen, uh, we got to talk about uh, this fellow wrestler that, that passed away recently. Can you just talk about your relationship with him and 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 what is what was that dynamic like? You know what, man? Shad Gaspard. Uh, he came into the business almost as wild as I did. Uh, you know, we both grew up in, in in environments where you had to fight for everything you got. And um, I was raised to punch first and, and talk about it later. And he grew up in, uh, in, 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 in New York and he worked in the clubs and stuff. You probably seen him if you ever went to, Sue's Rendezvous. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, I, I, I know uh, of it. I never went there, but wow, yeah. Right, 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 spent right. too much money. And, and, <laughs> right. And, <laughs> and, <laughs> and if you went to Sin City and all of those type clubs, like, he worked the door. He traveled around because he was just a hitter. You know, he was just a big dude that, yeah. you know, didn't take a lot of flack off nobody. And if you told him to secure the door, he secured the door. Uh, he met a guy named Teddy that got him into uh, pro wrestling, and he came in with that same mentality. And mm. uh, it rubbed a lot of people wrong. But then as you got to know him, you realized that he was probably one of the most loyal and most honorable uh, guys that I've ever been around. <laughs> and uh, there's a, a group in pro wrestling, kind of a secret society, uh, it's not so secret now, um, uh, <laughs> called the delegation. And the delegation is a collection of African-American wrestlers around the world. You know, they work in every company in the world, and he was one of us. And we, we love each other's families. We, we talk about fatherhood. We talk about manhood. We talk about forgiveness and, you know, yeah. uh, we talk about our pride being the last thing that we want to defend because, you know, you know how we are as men. Um, we, we tend to be pretty prideful, especially people yeah. that's in the fight world. Uh, you, you tend to want to show off and talk about the past. And right. uh, yes. he was a guy that later in his life, um, his last 10 years in pro wrestling, uh, he got it. And he was a mentor and he helped. and. He started to diversify and, and do other things. And uh, he, he started getting into acting and he was in a, a bunch of movies and he would always call you, hey man, don't miss this movie. Don't miss this movie. You know your boy's in there. I'm in there. <laughs> and, you know, and, and I'm, I'm gonna miss that, man. I'm gonna miss that. Wow, so who mentored who? Did you mentor him? Yes, I, I was one that, that mentored him and uh, early on, you know, he'll he'll he would have been the first one to tell you. Uh, Mark would tell me stuff, but it would go in one ear and right out the other. And uh, for whatever reason, it, it, he just got it, man. It, it, it's like the the light switch went off, and and he became a guy. Everybody already loved Shad because he was so colorful and funny and uh, vagarious, but it was like the 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 stone mason that's able to take a rough stone and smooth it to where it's something that could be shown as a piece of art, you know, and, and he knocked off all those rough edges and smoothed itself out. And Hey man, I consider myself a super dad. You know, I'm, I'm around my kids a whole lot and I, I, I showed him different parts of this world. He did the same thing except his wasn't track or tennis or football. His was mixed martial arts. So he's got a 10-year-old son that's, you know, been 
in mixed martial arts for five years already, you know, over half his life. And we, we as the delegation want to make sure that all of that stuff keeps going. He'll never have to pay for a karate class, a, a wrestling class, a boxing class. We're going to take care of him. Um, mm. But that's, that's the internal uh, thing that the, that the delegation is going to, going to do. We just letting his wife have her space right now. And we asked everybody that's a fan of pro wrestling, give his wife some space right now. Like it, it's hard to lose somebody, never to lose you. Nevertheless, your soulmate, the father, of your son, and yes. the, the breadwinner, the, I mean, it's, it's many roles that he had. Um, and she lost that. And she needs to get her space. Wow. Mm. Let's let's switch no. gears a little bit. That was, that's very touching. But I want to talk about a couple of things. Uh, every kid, you know, when you're young, you want to be a superhero, you know, with super strength. But you, you actually achieved that. And I was wondering, was there ever a time, because I know when you achieve something great, it, it seems to take a long time to get there. But when you get there, everything goes quickly. Everything moves so fast. You know, so was there ever a time when you got the setback and you said, wait a minute, I'm the strongest man on this whole planet. Wow. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, that happened. That happened. <laughs> and it wasn't, you would think that it would be the world championships. Or it would be the Olympic Games or mm -hmm. uh, the world championships in, in any sport. I, I, I competed in powerlifting, weightlifting, Olympic weightlifting, and strongman. And I won the world championships in strongman. I won the world championships in powerlifting. Uh, I was a national champion seven times in Olympic weightlifting. And I didn't win a world title. Uh, but that sport was different. It's the oldest of all the sports. And uh, it's more of an athletic and technical sport um, that I was not introduced to until 1990. Uh, and I made the Olympic team in 92. Uh, I really didn't start wow. training until the middle of 90, the summer of 91. So oh my God. pretty much I made the Olympic team in 11 months. Six months. Oh, okay. Wow. And, um, you know, I, I, I enjoyed that experience. But when I started doing strongman feats and feats of strength, uh, that's when I, I, I felt like I was the strongest man on the planet because uh, there was the Thomas Inch Unliftable Dumbbell, which it was called the Unliftable for 112 years before me because nobody wow. could lift it with one hand, and I did. Uh, wow. The Apollon's Wheels, uh, John Davis in, in the 60s uh, was the Olympic champion, and Norbert Shemansky also was an uh, Olympic champion. Uh, both of those guys tried to lift the Apollon Wheels, and it took them – a couple of years uh, to be able to do it. And um, there was another guy that uh, ate off of pollen himself who lifted mm. it, who claimed to have lifted. Nobody ever saw a pollen lifted in oh. the, in the oh. late 1800s, early 1900s. It was like one of those things that was said that happened. <laughs> and um, when, when I got wind of this implement, I wanted to lift it at least one time for everybody that ever lifted it in history. I wasn't thinking about lifting it once. Yeah. Uh, and, and I was able to do that. I went to the Arnold Classic, uh, World's Strongest Man, and I lifted it three times. And, wow. you know, I, I showed off a little bit, and I could have <laughs> probably lifted it four. But, you know, I had done what I set out to do. And those two things. Um, when I finished them, not only did I have the best strength people in the world standing there judging this, mm -hmm. and they say, God, I, I just, I, I never thought that I would see that. And mm. that's when I realized that, you know, man, everything I do, you know, I'm, I'm competing against the ghost of greatness, <laughs> not the people that's on the platform with me. Wow. Mark Henry on the line with us who hosts. Bust it open every Friday and Saturday, 10 to 12 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Mark, I want to talk about the beast and the mountain, man. Like, how serious this uh, is this boxing match? You're talking about strong, man. He's a two-strong man getting in a boxing ring. 
Very different world. Is this going to be a real fight? No headgear, real small boxing gloves. Like, how serious is this? Man, listen, I don't know all the particulars, but I'm actually going to interview both guys uh, in the cu- upcoming weeks, and mm-hmm. uh, I'll have a lot of the, a lot of questions. I'll be able to come on and talk to you more about it uh, soon. I'll let y'all know. Um, but both of these guys have been world's strongest man. They they both have won the strongest man in the world contest at least once. And my records I take seriously. And the, and the, and they take the record serious too. There could only be one. And I think that um because Thor is younger and he's gotten a lot more sensationalism in the press being that he was the mountain on Game of Thrones and He's got that attention. Eddie is like, hey, don't forget about me. I set the record first. Right. Like, you know, um, you didn't do it in a in a legitimate contest. You did it in a training session. You know, so that technically don't count. And, you know, them them fighting words is <laughs> where I'm from. <laughs> like, if I did it, I did it. It don't matter. Mm-hmm. Um, but they have gotten to the point to where they like, hey, man, let's Let's quit talking about it and let's let's go and throw these hands. And <laughs> I don't think that's a good idea because, like I said, I, I I fought before as a kid, and I was not good at it. <laughs> I was I, I was ten years old fighting twelve year olds because of my weight. And as you know, in Golden Glove, like the hand speed is ten times faster if you're two years removed. I mean, you you you're a twelve year old fighting a fourteen year old, a fourteen year old fighting a sixteen year old. It don't matter, right? Like so, um, these guys haven't fought and had that kind of experience, and I think that it could be dangerous uh, if you get hit and fall, or if mm. you get tired and you start moving forward and backwards, which is a cardinal sin. Um, to see those guys hyperextend their knee or something, anything could happen when you're that weight. They both weigh 400 pounds, right? Yeah. You know, so I mean, it's it's uh, this is gonna be the heaviest. They're building it as the heaviest boxing match in history, and it's <laughs> gonna be the heaviest boxing match by far. I'm talking about over 100 pounds heavier than any tandem of men that have ever entered a boxing ring. Right. I hope that they wear headgear. That's that's the one thing that's, I mean, I, if if you wear a, a twenty ounce gloves, I, I I rather I like that too, but <laughs> I doubt it because <laughs> they want to hit each other. Yeah, they want. Well, maybe they crazy. should find a, a a better way to solve their dispute. You know, something that's you know that's reflective of their sport that they're good at. You know, because I think that's that's a little bit crazy. But listen, well, Eddie you've been is involved out of his in- prime. Eddie is out of his prime. He's not the guy yeah. he used to be. It's like. It's like Michael Mike Tyson fighting DeAndre Wilder. Exactly. That's exactly what I mean. It just doesn't make sense right now.